Hi, I'm Gemma Siegel, and I am here with Gemma Bond for ABT Kids, and we are talking about the women's movement. I'm so thrilled to be here because I decided to become champion sponsor of the women's movement, mostly because I was so inspired by the first time I got to see Gemma, who was pregnant with her first child, and choreographing um, an amazing piece that she later went on to present in Washington, D.C., where I went to college. So all roads have led me to Gemma, including that my name is Jenna, and we were meant to know each other. So I have some amazing questions from some of the incredible dancers with ABT that Gemma and I wanted to discuss today. Hi, Gemma. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much for this. It's so nice. So, so nice. It's amazing. Thank you. Um, Gemma, our first questions are from May and Shui, who are dancers right now with ABT School. And they want to know what some of the biggest challenges women face in ballet today are and in society in general that you're finding are affecting ballet. That's a big question. Yeah, that's huge. I think... Um, one of the biggest challenges for me as a professional dancer is that ballerinas have a stigma to them. Um, people think it's very feminine. It's very, it's like girly. You wear your tiaras, you wear your tutus. And when you're on a professional level, it's not like that at all. It's very athletic. It's competitive. It's um, so disciplined. And it's something that you have a passion for because you love to move. You just love to dance. I don't think I know of any ballerinas that love the dressing up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the dressing up element is a huge part of it, but that that is like getting into character. That's like when you've learned all the steps, when you've per perfected what you're gonna do. Um, and when I meet people and tell them, oh, I was a ballet dancer, um, I think that, first thought is like, is that a real job? Um, <laughs> is that real? I thought that was just for kids. And um, then when I say, oh, no, it was with American Ballet Theatre. I also danced with the Royal Ballet. There, It opens up um, a ton of questions and people take it a little bit more seriously. But I guess for me, uh, the challenge was like, I felt like people always spoke to me as if I was a little girl. I wish we could educate the public a little bit more about ballet and what it really takes to be a professional artist, because I think then we could change their mind about who does it and why we do it. Um, yes. My experience has really been in getting to know dancers is that you're really professional athletes uh, in, in the same way that a football player or a soccer player um, yes, I agree. And it's, it is, it is remarkable what you do in the training that, that is involved to get there. And, um, what do you hope or, or plan to happen for, you know, women in the future when it comes to, uh, choreography and, um, and I guess ballet as a whole? Um, well, I think for me, as a dancer, I never got to work with a female choreographer firsthand. I was in Twyla Tharp's ballets that were um, restaged. I was third cast to a new Twyla Tharp ballet, but I never got to create it with her. I was never first cast um, working in the room one-on-one -on -one with a female choreographer. Um, Jessica Lang, I was in one of her pieces, but again, I was third cast. So I was never really in the room. I was like the understudy in case something happens, so go in and out. And I would love that um, the dancers now don't suffer from that, that they, when they're older, they um, they don't even think about it. They're, it's not always a male teaching them the choreography, that they do have that experience to create with a woman. I always wondered, especially when dancing on, on toe, how, what are the challenges of always working with male choreographers who may not understand what that, that is like, or, you know, 
what that um, a woman's body's abilities are and are not. And and how does that affect when you are helping to choreograph something? How do you feel the dancers are responding to having someone who actually has done it, has felt it, understands literally what it's like to be in her ballet shoes? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it depends who the choreographer is, to be honest, but it can be incredibly frustrating <laughs> sometimes when um, it's the transitions of being on the toe and off. And I think unless you, like you're saying, unless you've danced in point shoes frequently, then it's really hard. Even myself, now when I choreograph, I don't wear point shoes. I mm -hmm. wear flat shoes or socks. And even now I after I had a career of 20 years being on point and I will still say to the dancer, is that weird? No, wait, I need to try it. I need to put point shoes on. I need to know how that feels. Um, so I think I'm a little bit more generous or a more, um, it's more of a conversation. Like, how does it feel? Whereas I think sometimes um, with men, it can be like, that's what it is. <laughs> Right. Because that's the way it's always been. That's the tradition of ballet that they um, give the steps and you you do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Figure out how to do them. Yeah. Right. Um, so Rachel um, would like to know how long have women be, been choreographing dance? And I think that also the question is how long have you been doing it and um, I would love for you to talk a little bit about your evolutionary history of moving into choreography and also a little bit about why you you stopped seeing a progression of female choreographers coming coming up um, with you I know for me and I, I told you before I was not a dancer because I have zero talent um, but um, in dance, in dance. <laughs> um, and, um, and so, but all of my ballet, all of my dance teachers were always women and they definitely were choreographing our, our ballet recitals or our, um, you know, jazz recitals. And they'd be in these big auditoriums at school and at different schools. And I've had this conversation with you before where I was curious why on a professional level it didn't it wasn't transcending in the same way that it it certainly was on I hate to say amateur level but whatever the commercial level is of 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 ballet and and dance in communities I think it's just a matter of so many females start at a young age um, I don't know what the percentage is. Um, I know like when I was growing up, every little girl went to ballet class and um, probably finished at like 10 or 11. And then if you were serious, you carried on. Um, and then there were a few teenagers in my school, but not many. And I imagine like a few of those teenagers became teachers or they went on to do something else and came back to it because it was always a passion for them. Um, but then there were the others. There were a few of us that went to a school, like a big school, like the Royal Ballet or Elmhurst or one of these art schools um, and carried on as professionals. And as you get higher up, um, there are more men. So in your local ballet school, there is like one boy, um, two boys. As you go up, the system has taken all these boys and it becomes more equal. So when you join a big ballet company, it's nearly 50-50. It's not quite 50-50, but um, the ratio of men to women is um, pretty equal. So I think it's just a matter of like, at the top levels, there are lots of men. And in traditional ballet, they generally have more time than women. Um, hmm. In the Royal Ballet, when I was there, we were doing a lot of classical ballets and Swan Lake, Sleeping Beauty, Nutcracker, there are four acts. 
And normally the women are in all four acts because there's a dream scene, the white act, and then there's the roundup at the end. And the men are normally just in two of those acts. So if you think about just the time we spend rehearsing, <laughs> you know, the women would have full days every day and the men would have a half day just because of the nature of what we were performing. Okay. Um, and then when we, when Wayne McGregor became resident choreographer, he started to do something completely new. And it really changed, I think, a lot of opportunities for women because all of a sudden we didn't have the schedule that we had before. So there would be probably 30 Swan Lakes. During that time, the men had a lot of um, extra time where they would dip into other opportunities like choreography, women couldn't do that. So they just had more free time because they would be in half of the ballet. <laughs> and it's just the tradition of ballet that they were never in these dream scenes. They were never in the white acts, um, which would be like act two swans and then act four swans. Um, yeah. And then in La Baya Day, you have the dream scene with the shades, Kingdom of the Shades. And then you have Corset, you have Waltz of the Flowers. Like it just goes on and on that in every traditional ballet, there are 40 minutes of dance that doesn't include men. Um, Never thought about that. So they would definitely have more time to dip their toes into choreography or anything else related to dance. I think the culture is changing now because we have people like Alexei Rotmansky, Way McGregor, Christopher Wilden that are keeping the structure of classical ballet, but they're telling stories um, in a way that they are having everyone on stage at the same time. So now it's much more even. Now it's like, I can't think of an Alexei ballet that has just women on stage for 40 minutes or, you know, he's like using everyone that's there. Um, so it's definitely different. But when I was dancing, especially in the beginning, it was just a time thing. I didn't have time to. That makes sense. About it. <laughs> it right. so Jenna, how do you feel about the term female choreographer instead of just being known as a, a choreographer? I think it's, a, for me right now, because females are lacking in this art form, I think it's quite nice to have female choreographer purely because a little girl is not just reading choreographer and that's it. She's, she's seeing female choreographer and that already makes her wheels turn and think, oh, that's a possibility for me. Um, if there were more of us, I would say drop the female um, mm -hmm. because we're just choreographers at the end of the day. Um, and I choreograph movement for men and, you know, it's not always female. It doesn't always look female. It looks like it could have been done by a man sometimes. Um, it's got an energy to it. it it's strong it's athletic and I think sometimes when we have that female label I wish it didn't but it has a, a feeling it gives people like that it's going to be soft and dreamy and you know um yeah but right now because there aren't many females I do think it's nice to have that label just so that young um dancers young girls see it as an opening for them. I, I like to say that you need to see it to be it. And yep. um, and I, I agree. I think that, that it's it's something we will get to, but it's a it's a process. And um, right now it's it's important that uh, that girls know that they can do it too. Yeah. Follow, your, follow literally your steps. <laughs> Oh, I hope so. Well, not my steps, but <laughs> some of yours, yes. <laughs> some of them. So thank you. And on behalf of ABT's board of trustees, we are so grateful for your time and your commitment to ABT kids and getting more um, young female choreographers to say, why not me? And to take 
uh, the extra time they have and, and go forward and pursue this passion. Definitely. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. <laughs>